Hello everyone! As I'm making this video, Ho Yifan has a promising position against Gawain Jones and it's hard to say if she will be able to convert uh, it into a whole point, but it seems that round 9 might be, might be her round. Uh, but let's get back to our real game. Uh, this is Anish Giri with the black pieces against Russian Grandmaster Maxim Matlakov. And uh, it seems Giri is uh, little by little becoming the star of the show. Here in this game we have an epic moment in chess history. Uh, Giri offered a draw, not by actually offering a draw, he offered a, a, three, a threefold repetition and uh, Maxim Matlakov declined it, so this is something we don't see very often. Giri offers a draw uh, and his opponent declines, so let's see, let's see this interesting moment. Uh, Matlakov has the white pieces and he opens with knight to f3, the ready opening. We have d5, g3 and bishop to g4, uh, the, the Keras variation of the King's Indian attack. And this is something I often like to employ against players who go knight to f3 uh, because I just want to exchange that light square bishop to get rid of it. That light square bishop always uh, annoys me whenever I play with black. Uh, but then sometimes my opponents troll me with knight to e5 and then I have to play something I have no idea what I'm doing. But getting back to this game, uh, bishop to g2 by Matlakov, c6, uh, we have castles and knight to d7, h3. Uh, bishop to h5 and d4 now. e6, c4 and bishop to e7. Knight to c3, d captures on c4 and we have b3 uh, offering that full pawn. Uh, Giri of course accepts this, c captures on b3, queen captures on b3 and immediately queen to b6 offering a trade of queens as you are a full pawn up. So uh, queen to a4. Uh, declining the trade of queens, knight g to f6, uh, rook to b1, attacking the queen. Uh, queen to c7, bishop to f4 now, developing a piece uh, with a tempo on the queen on c7. Uh, we have queen to c8 and rook f to c1. And uh, what did Matlakov uh, really gain for his pawn? He has very nicely developed rooks, uh, both knights are active. Uh, this bishop is on a very nice long diagonal here. This bishop here on g2 isn't uh, doing that much now. Uh, but if the position on the queen side opens up, uh, he will have quite a lot of compensation for the material. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, the position, there's really nothing to go for immediately. So the position is quite all right for black. It's, uh, you know, passively comfortable or comfortably passive, uh, however you prefer it. But it's just the way Giri likes it. So Giri castles, we have queen to b3 now. Uh, eyeing that b7 pawn, and here we have bishop to g6, uh, attacking the rook on b1. Rook has to move, and now we have rook to d8. Uh, the reason Giri doesn't defend the pawn is that uh, there's no need to defend the pawn immediately. Uh, but uh, let's just say why, why it would be a bad idea to defend the pawn, even if it's a bad idea. If you play something like this, then after knight to h4, uh, the bishop on g2 comes alive, and then this bishop and this bishop are simply monsters. So after this rook to b2, Giri plays the correct move, rook to d8, and here we have a4. Uh, we have a5, and uh, the reason why it's not okay to grab the pawn, if you capture then bishop to a3, this simply uh, grabs material, wins the exchange. So after rook to d8, we have a4, uh, and now a5. Uh, knight to d2, we have knight to h5, attacking the dark square bishop, bishop to e3 and knight h back to f6. And uh, this is the critical moment in the game. Here, if you look at the position, <coughs> this uh, here move, Giri played knight to h5. We have bishop to e3, uh, and Giri moves the knight back, knight to f6. And if Matlakov repeated the position here, bishop to f4, uh, it's, you know, there's really no, n no good moves uh, here for black. It's hard to say if Giri would repeat knight to h5, but it's very hard to find a better move than knight to h5. So basically here, by returning knight to f6, Giri offers a draw. And uh, Matlakov does not go for bishop to f4, uh, going for threefold repetition, uh, but instead plays knight to c4. With the idea that now the knight is guarding the a3 square, there is no more tactics with bishop to a3, so now Matlakov is ready to capture on b7. Uh, Giri plays knight to d5, we have queen captures, and now comes bishop to b4. Now, cutting off the rook's defense of the queen on b7. So, the queens get exchanged, queen captures, rook captures uh, on c8, and knight to a2, attacking the bishop on b4. Uh, knight captures on e3, we have f captures on e3, and c5 now. Either threatening to break open the center, or uh, add, adding more defense to the bishop on b4. Uh, 
Uh, we have knight to d6 going after the rook, and here we have bishop to a3. Uh, knight captures rook on c8, bishop captures on b2, and now knight to e7 check. Uh, wherever the king goes, the knight will capture the bishop on g6 uh, with check, so king f8. Uh, better to improve the position of your king. Knight captures, h captures, and rook to c2. Bishop goes to a3. And uh, if you look at this position, did uh, Matlakov really improve his position uh, when he decided not to go for bishop to f4? Or is this position now actually favoring black? Uh, well, it's definitely not favoring white. I think here we have uh, a classic case of uh, pushing for something when you actually have nothing just because you have the white pieces uh, against someone like Giri, and that's, that's definitely never a good idea. So, bishop to c6, we have... Uh, c captures on d4, e captures on d4, and now rook to c8. So, uh, I mean, okay, it, they are opposite colored bishops, but there are still knights and rooks on the board, so it doesn't really uh, look like a draw or anything. And uh, if you look at this, white has three pawn islands, black has two pawn islands, so again, a favorable position for, for black. Uh, we have e3 here, uh, king to e7, improving the position of the king, king to f1, uh, bishop to d6 and uh, g4 now. Knight to b6, rook to c1, uh, we have bishop to a3, rook back to c3, and bishop to b4. And here, uh, I think Matlakov just didn't want to play that rook to c2 because uh, he's, <laughs> this rook started uh, his journey from c2 and he didn't want to uh, admit that actually rook to c1 to c3 was a mistake. So instead of going rook to c2, he decided to capture the bishop. But better was rook to c2 and allow Giri to go knight to d5. Uh, this does threaten to capture on e3, forking the king and the rook, but after king to e2, he can still continue this game. Uh, but after this, bishop to b4, he decided to capture it. Knight captures and pawn captures. And while this does create a passed pawn for white, it actually creates a much more dangerous passed pawn uh, for black. So, uh, rook to c5, and the rook can't really go on any, any other file other than the c file, as it does have to protect the bishop here, and the bishop can't really move from c6, as it has to block this rook's attack uh, towards this rook. So, not, not a comfortable position for, for white. Uh, rook to c5 was played, but now comes b3, as there is no piece that can stop the journey of this pawn. Uh, a5, white tries to push, but now comes knight, knight to d7, uh, attacking the rook, and uh, here it's all over, uh, black. Uh, Ma Matlakov simply resigned the game, as there is nothing he can do to prevent the journey of this pawn. Uh, he would have to move the rook, and then simply lose a piece, uh, rook will have to move, and then after rook captures, he's just a piece down, and it's, it's an unplayable position. So... After this knight move, uh, Matlako resigned the game and uh, a great victory for Anish Giri, who just basically played a, a nice passively comfortable or comfortably passive game with the black pieces, uh, offered the draw and after his opponent refused, just uh, made most uh, out of the position in hand. So this is something that uh, happened to me quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot of times and I'm sure it happened to a lot of you. Uh, you know, you play, and it doesn't matter even if you're playing against a stronger opponent, you have the white pieces, you maybe feel, you're feeling the pressure, you have to win. So you go for it, and then you lose the game. So by, by this uh, game, Giri is now in uh, sole uh, first place, and uh, it's, uh, it's a bit early to tell anything, but uh, you know, it's, a, it's a very nice position uh, to win the tournament. He already faced Magnus, he drew that game, and... Uh, there are four more rounds to go, so anything can happen, but, you know, definitely after nine rounds uh, being uh, in first place, definitely an achievement. So, like I said, uh, I don't know, maybe Yifan's game against Gawain Jones already finished, maybe uh, she managed to score her first victory, if so, I will definitely show that game. Uh, Carlson and Anand uh, drew their game very early, so no, not much action there, and I think most of the games were drawn. So, not, not a very exciting round in the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, you know, it's always after a rest today, they will either, uh, you know, bring fireworks or it will be just a, a calm <laughs> a calm day. So, yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, hopefully with a first win from Ho Yifan. See you soon.